2016 has been a roller coaster of a ride for the tech world. Facebook started a war against fake news. It also debuted its live video stream. We've also witnessed Russian hackers influence our election and seen other cyber attacks on major companies. And we can't forget Nike's self-lacing shoes. CBS News contributor and editor of the New Yorker magazine's website, Nicholas Thompson, is following the latest and joins me now. Nick, one of the biggest tech, I don't know if we should say highlights or lowlights that we saw of 2016, Apple versus the FBI in the San Bernardino case. not a highlight case. in any way whatsoever. Except it sort of woke us up yeah. to what technology is in our world and where we stand. What, what's the impact that that's having right now on us? A huge, a huge impact, huge story. So what happened, as people probably remember, is the San Bernardino shooter's data was on his iPhone. The FBI said, please, we need to get this. Apple said, actually, we can't access it. The FBI said, then you need to build software to be able to access it. Apple said, no, 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 no. We'll give you our phones. We're not going to hack our own devices. And it right. turned into a battle royale. All of Silicon Valley lined up against the FBI. And a guy a lot of people hadn't heard of at that point, James Comey, it got very intense very quickly. Yeah. The consequences it really poisoned the relations between Washington and Silicon Valley. We're still working through that. It also made all of these tech companies massively prioritize encryption. The number of encryption experts hired at Apple in the period after that story very large number. You're going to see much more secure devices. We've already seen it across all kinds of other platforms where a lot more information is being encrypted in a lot more secure ways than previously. I feel like a lot of times in cases like this, the average person sits back and says, it just, just doesn't impact me, though. There's yeah. no impact on me. But there is for, for those of us who just use technology on a daily basis. There's, isn't there? All of our devices are different. And so if you care a lot about privacy and encryption, you probably feel a little bit better. Right? Yeah. You know, you feel like my devices are probably more secure, right? They're end-to-end -end encryption. This is, this is a good thing. Right. If you care a lot about the FBI being able to solve crimes, you think, wait a second, did you really have to go so hard against Apple so that then they did this? Like, couldn't you guys just gotten together and figured this out the way the government and technology used to do it? Like, it's probably better for our country if Silicon Valley and the government kind of get along and have a good together. understanding and find a balance, right. it's not good to have these institutions at loggerheads. One of the other things we saw this year, fake news oh my uh, gosh, on sites, especially like Facebook. How might we see sites crack down on that in the future? I think we're going to see a massive crackdown on fake news. I think we are starting to see it at Facebook. Facebook has prioritized it. They have released a bunch of fixes that will stop. Right? Remember, there are these you know, towns in Macedonia where every young kid is there creating fake stories about how wonderful Donald Trump is that are then you know, being shared on Facebook, advertising revenues flowing back to Macedonia. The stories, the completely fake stories, I think Facebook will be able to figure out a way to algorithmically stop it. Okay. But there's sort of gray areas of sort of fake stories. That's hard. It gets into a lot of complicated ethical legal questions for Facebook. I don't know how far they're going to go. I do know that there are a lot of people at that company and other tech companies who are saying, wait a second, the internet was supposed to make uh. everything more accurate, right? Not less no, accurate. just more accessible. <laughs> How did we do that? Yeah. And so they're dealing with their responsibility for that. Tech company that stood out to you this year? Slack. Slack, the workplace productivity company. They have grown like wildflowers. Okay. Started to slow down a little bit at the end. But Slack, you know, where you communicate in your office with your colleagues, that was just amazing, the amount they grew from the beginning to the end. And a surprising company. You know, it started out as a video game. The video game was failing. The founder said, well, Let's try this other thing that we've done, and they turned it into the hottest company in America. I love that. How about a top trend? Prognosticate, if you will, for us. A top trend we may see in 2017. A lot more voice communication, right? We started to see with the Amazon Echo. We've yeah. seen Siri. Siri was terrible. Siri could never get anything right. <laughs> I stopped using Siri, and then right. this year, again, I picked up. I was like, Siri, let me ask you. A Whoa, wait, wait, Siri works? So some, you know, there have been increases in machine learning, voice recognition, pattern recognition so much you're going to see a lot of talking to your devices. It's so a lot of people talking to their, you know, themselves, but to, they're to, to not their really, thermostats, to their, phone, to their right. ovens, to their Alexas. <laughs> I was going to say, it's like any good relationship. It just yeah. takes time to understand each other. We used other. to talk to people. Yeah. Now we'll <laughs> not talk, anymore. Now we'll talk to objects. <laughs> We're talking, Nick. We're yeah. talking. We are. Thank you so much. Temporarily. We appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Nick Thompson, thank you. Thank you.